Yeah, so today we will be seeing about deep learning. Um, uh, so I maybe some of you guys might be somehow familiar with the concept of deep learning neural networks and things like that. So in order to be sure uh, about the ground, we're to the ground we're talking. So let me just hear from you how many of you have tried or heard or like anything that you know about neural network or if you haven't heard about it before also uh, let's just see in what level we are and uh, yeah maybe it will give me some guidance in order to go deeper or things so yeah let's see how many of you have heard about deep learning before i've tried kira so okay Okay, Matthias, is this for this training? Uh, I mean, for this week's project or before that? Have you you tried neural networks before that? Until Matthias can write, no background before. Okay, very nice. No background, Abraham, okay, you just write. Okay, other people? Maybe have some. Yodahi, Nadia, Daniel. I've used it before when I used for a certain project LSD. Okay, so you, if you've just used LSD, so it means that you're somehow very familiar with neural networks. Nope. Maybe Danny, I can see Danny over here. I've never used it before. So, okay. It's, Thank you. So uh, some of us are somehow familiar and some of us are not. So uh, deep learning and neural networks uh, as general, they are, uh, they might be uh, deep. So we'll just try to uh, see the introduction part and maybe in the middle of uh, the season, the if I complicate things, you can tell me and I will try to uh, say them more in a familiar way. Okay. So yeah. Let's start. So uh, before deep learning or deep neural network, there is this the normal neural network, right? Or artificial neural networks. So probably we might not be that familiar with neural networks, but we know machine learning, right? So there is just this tra traditional way of doing the machine learning. And there, then one, uh, one apart, there is this the neural networks and there's this deep neural network. So let's just feel all uh, right within that. So let's just start from deep learning and we will go, we're, we're going to compare them with other types of learning, okay? So deep learning, it's a subfield of machine learning first. So when we say machine learning, there's this ob uh, obvious concept, right? Predicting something depending on some data set that we have. So that uses algorithm inspired by structure and function of the brain's neural network. So deep learning also, they it do, it does the same thing as machine learning. Uh, not the same thing, actually, it's even the subfield, which is it's under machine learning. And above that, there is this. It's inspired by the structure and function of the brain's neural network. That is, as we can understand from the name, it is just uh, inspired from the neural network. So as it works from uh, in the structure of the brain neural network, then we just name these neural networks. So there's that neural network. And when we came to deep learning, it's Again, subset of machine learning that uses multi-layered neural networks, but um, we can just understand from the name it is deep, which means there are layers that we can use in machine uh, in neural networks. When we use multi-layered uh, networks or more than two, most of the time, that's called deep neural networks. That is the difference. So it is just if, if we if we're going to predict or make a decision on some simple think we can just go with actually we can just go with machine learning and then if it is somehow complicated we can just use layers and use neural networks and if not deep deep neural um, deep neural networks so deep learning means the when we go deep on the machine learning process which is deep neural network is covered or it's just uh, the another way of saying same thing okay deep learning means another way of saying the neural deep neural networks so what what is the use? I mean, what do why do you use uh, deep uh, deep learning instead of the other simple methods of 
machine learning. The first one is the computer vision. As you can see, the computer vision, space recognition, natural language processing, and recommendations, they are somehow, um, uh, you know, a bigger, a bigger aspect of uh, prediction. They need some uh, inspections or careful inspection before the prediction. So in computer vision, that's the computer's ability to extract information and ins insight from the image and videos. In order to do that, it might be it is preferable to use the deep learning methods rather than just the random machine learning methods. And in speech recognition also, and deep learning models can analyze human speech. So like it's going to be trained in speech. The our data set is going to be speech. This is also deep uh, or complicated. So it's preferable to use deep learning methods or the neural network method. The natural language processing, it needs to understand insights and meaning from text and data documents. It might be understanding specific language. Uh, so it needs to understand human language as, and uh, semantically understand their feelings, understand their emotions, the language itself. So also deep learning would be preferable and for recommendation engines too, which is we can use deep learning methods to track user activity and develop uh, our personalized recommendations. So they can uh, analyze the behavior of various users and help them discover new products or service. Okay, so just recommendation as we used to do before this. So this, those are easier concepts, right? So we can just put for what functions or for what purpose do you think are we going to throw for what uh, use from the four listed use of the deep learning for, for which one are we going to use deep learning for this week project? I think that it's simple, right? You can just write it on the chat board. Oops. For the computer vision, space recognition, natural language processing or recommendation engines. Which one do you think are we going to use? It's just info. Yes. Abraham said yeah, recommendation in just for so the I uh, as you have seen or yeah, well you've been working on the project on the on this week's challenge, so we're going to use it for recommendation in general. So there are components of deep neural networks or neural networks as general. Those are the input layers, the hidden layers, and the output layers. So just keep in mind that we've just said uh, they work in this slide. We've just said they are going to work as the human brain work, right? In neural or in network form. So um, when you just say network, you can relate that there is something related with connected with another thing, right? So we just call them a layer, maybe just to see the over the like, overview. It's just things like things like this. Okay, there's something here we're going to uh, explain it later and there's the other thing here so there is a network between both from this input let's just assume that they are input and output there is a relation or network uh, connection between the input and the output right so layers this one is uh, just consider that this one as in one layer two layer three layers and things like that uh, so yeah that's the definition of layer so when we can when we come to input layers um, Input layers means the first layer, or in this case, there's the A00 and A10 layers. So that we can, um, there are several, several nodes that input the data into it. Those nodes make up an input layer of the system. So this is where we can, we're going to feed our data or our inputs, okay? So there's this data set that we want to create, that we have trained the data on, and then there's the test or the verification or the test data, right? So on the test data, there's this data, uh, the, all the test data. Maybe on the data set, we might have five features, six features, right? Depending on the features we have, we're going to put uh, in the number of, if you have n features, we're going to put in the number of nodes. We're going to count this this one, the, the one circle as one node, the other as the second node, and like one node, two node. As a whole, this, the first part is a layer. We're going to count it as a layer, but as individually, the circles are considered as a node. So we have the input layer and there's the hidden layer. The hidden layer, they are everything, uh, they they are uh, everything in between the input and the output layers, okay? They process and passes the data to, layer, to layers further in neural networks. They see the layers process information at different level, adapting their behavior as they receive new information. So uh, we've just said, so like, keep in mind, we've just said that if they are neural network things they are just put it 
Okay, from the beginning, we're going to predict something depending on some data. We just said that since they are neural networks, we are going to put different types of layers, okay? And we also say that the difference between neural network and deep learning is in neural network, we might use one layer, two layers, just simple layers. In deep learning, we might use many amount of layers here, okay? There, this is considered as the input layer, one layer, another layer, three layer, and output here. It's not drawn here, but this is just simple layer in order to show you the calculation. Forget about the calculation now, okay? Don't confuse yourself. So the, the point that I wanted to tell here is there is this one is considered as the input layer, and this one is not the output. Since this is for the calculation, it's the, there is one out of one layer missing here, okay? So if this layer is between this the input layer and there's there should be another output layer here, any layers between those layers, they are called hidden layers, okay? So there's the input layer, the hidden layers, and the output layer here. We're going to, this is considered as the futures, n number of futures or uh, n amount of, uh, depending on the parameter of the x we have, we're going to put n amounts of nodes, we just said, okay? For example, uh, yeah, if we have, like if we're predicting the price of a house, then the number of uh, rooms, the number of the colors of the rooms and things like that, they're going to consider as the features and we're going to have n amount of features. And there's the hidden layer and the output layer. Okay, here we have just mentioned that. We can uh, then proceed input layer. Yeah, those are the hidden layers, okay? So we can have n amount of hidden layers. It's not specified. We're the one to decide what amount of hidden layers to have or not, okay? But the more the hidden layer we have, the more we're going to have a good prediction on our data set. So the input layer pre-process and passes the data uh, to uh, two layers further in the neural network. So the hidden layers process information at different levels, adapting their behavior as they receive new, new information. So like what you can understand from this is depending on the information or like adapting the behavior, uh, the layers or the hidden layers are the one who are going to do that, okay? So the more hidden layer we have, the more we're going to adapt the behavior of our data set. Deep learning networks have hundreds of hidden layers that they can use to analyze a problem from several different angles, okay? Just again, keep in mind that if the hidden layers are the one to understand or analyze uh, problems from several different angles, then the more uh, hidden layers we have, we can analyze different or more angles and it's easier to predict. For example, if you were given an image of unknown animal, so, so we've just mentioned that in the use of deep neural networks, one of them is for computer vision or for image recognition, right? So let's say, um, we were given an image of an unknown animal that we have to classify as it is what animal it is maybe so it's not going to consider specific only like two or three futures okay the animal if, if it have proofs uh what type of uh, what shape of eyes does it have so we can contain or consider many other, like different types of parameters so the hidden layers uh, uh, so if it, if the algorithm is trying to classify the image as what type of animal it is each of the hidden layers are going to process different features of the animal and tries to accurately categorize it. Okay, so I think uh, you have um, like you, you're supposed to have just the simplest form of understanding. No need to under, like complicate things. After all, we need to understand the concept and the the codes are going to do the calculation. So just have the idea what neural neural network is, what uh, neural networks are used for, and in what form are they operating okay so and then there is the third one of course the output layer then the output layer consists of nodes that output the data so which is the final uh, results or the prediction that means so maybe if the output layers or if the deep learning model if 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 if, it, if, it, if the answer is supposed to be yes or no then it's just a classification output uh maybe it also can be um to percentage okay we, we need to have a percentage of uh, something then we're going to decide on the percentage of the characteristics for to what uh, type is or prediction is going to be long for yes or no maybe we can uh, mention the an example that is always mentioned like maybe to classify email as a spam or not okay 
So on the other hand, so depending on that, depending on the decision that we're going to make, uh, that, uh, that will rely on what amount of nodes are we going to have on the output, okay? So we've just said that the input are going to depend on what amount of features do we have on the data set. The hidden layers is something that we're going to decide and depending on uh, the, complica the complication of our, uh, of our data or our analyzation, we are the one who are going to decide that the hidden layers and then there's the output. It's going to contain the nodes or the amount of nodes depending on the uh, type of uh, models that we're running. If it is classification, then it's going to be two or you know, just like that. So how does it work? Actually, I hope this is how it works in calculation format, but let's try to simplify that. So uh, how does it work? So we've just mentioned that it is a subset of machine learning, right? So that uses or multi-layered neural networks. Subset of machine learning and also its type of neural network, then we have many or like multi-layered ne neurons, then we can we call it deep learning. So um, it's also used to for the complex decision making power of the human brain. Okay, so by strict definition, deep neural networks or DNA is neural network with the three or more layers. In practice, most DNAs have many more layers. They are trained on large amount of data to identify and classify phenomena and recognize patterns and relationships, evaluate possibilities and make prediction and decisions. So we can just proceed how we, how it, those formulas or how those things works, but let's make sure that how we, uh, do you, have you got the clue or do you understand what we have said until now what the basic, especially for those of you who are not familiar with it, do you have uh, now, like, do you know what I mean? Okay, that it seems like, uh, are you confused? You can just be honest and we can go through it once again with the questions that we have. We can, we can make it interactive, okay? Yeah, the input and the output and hidden layers are clear. Yes, uh, that's the point. That's the point that you should understand. Uh, until now, we're going to go deeper on it other than Abraham. Thank you, Abraham. Okay, sorry, I'm back. So I was asking if, uh, I was asking the, your understanding on the concepts that we've talked until now. It is clear, yeah, Junior, you're familiar with it. You have, okay, okay, if it is clear, then we can proceed. Okay, thank you. So if that is clear, so how does it work? The first one is deep neural letters consist of multiple layers. We've just mentioned that uh, multiple times because that is the core point of deep learning. And they are interconnected nodes, each building upon the previous later layers to refine and optimize the prediction or categorization. This progression of computations through the network is called forward propagation. So the first step is to estimate or to predict the output, right? So it's called, there are two types of propagation here, the forward and the backward or back propagation. So what we're going to do is first we're just going to put a random uh, propagation, so a, a random graph. We can just say it's a graph. So if we are, if you, you are familiar with machine learning, then we we do have a graph, right? It might be linear, it might be polynomial. Just we do have a graph, and we're going to estimate the other values, or we're going to predict other values depending on that graph. It is just about to have or to get a graph that it's or that crosses most of the data set that we have. If it is linear, then it's easy. We can just fit linear graphs. And if the data is linear, we can just fit linear graph and it's going to be an easy prediction. But if not, if our data is complex, it might be polynom uh, yeah, polynomial, it might be a really curved uh, uh, graphs, okay? So we're just going to put random graph or random estimation for the graph. So there are two things here. Those are the weight and the bias, okay? 
what are those? This is the, the, the WOO and the B that you can find here. As we've mentioned, A0 and A1, they are just the input data, okay? So we got the number for those values, right? So here, uh, let's just say, let's just focus on A A01. Since it's a heated layer, it's the thing that we're going to predict or that we're going to the, that we're going to have the output from. It's not given. Only those values or the input values are given. Okay, so yeah, <clears throat> having those input values here, what we're going to focus on is the weight, the first one is. So we have different weights. Let's say A00, it's, uh, this is for the, this shows that uh, we're on the first layer or the input layer, and then there's the first layer. Okay, this weight is called W00. It relates the first node of the first layer with the first layer of the first hidden layer. Okay, the first node of the first hidden layer or this value is just easy. This weight is different than this weight. It's different than this weight. Okay, so the definition of the weight is it's a number that indicates in how much amount is uh are we going to is this going or is this parameter is going to affect affect the prediction okay so if this value is large or a large amount or a large number it means that uh, this future will affect the prediction in in large amount so that's how we decide the first one i said if it is our first step it's going to be a random guess but next there is something called back propagation we're going to describe it later on that part we can estimate we can increase or decrease the amount of the weight depending on our output or our prediction okay so there's the w or the weight and then there's the bias or b0 and the b part or the bias it's going to decide to imagine we've just we've just said that we've tried to feed a graph right since it's a prediction we try to fit a graph in our data set so it, it's going to tell us since it's addition so look the weight is going to be multiplied with our input so if this future will have no uh, effect on our output then it's going to be zero okay but the bias it's going to tell us it's an addition so it's going to tell the, our graph in what direction to move to the right to the left upward or downward okay since it's an addition so forget about the complicated things here so it is just the relation between this uh, input and this hidden layer is going to be the weight times this input plus the bias here, okay? The bias here, which is B0 since we're dealing with the first uh, layer, with the first hidden layer, okay? So those the two are the important part of uh, the prediction, the weight and the bias. So all the steps, the forward propagation and, or the backward propagation that we're going to calculate later, it's about adjusting the weight in the bias in order to in order for our graph to fit our data set. So here uh, consists of yeah mm, yeah this this pro, yeah okay different consists of multiple layers of interconnected nodes each building upon the previous layer to refine and optimize this progression of completion through the network is called forward propagation so this is back of, this is forward propagation at the end the value of a01 or the first uh, the first node of our first hidden layer is going to be the summation of every layer started this is the summation of the two okay there's two lines we can draw from this uh, input to this hidden layer we can only draw this one and this one right and then from this to this this and this from this to this for every one for every uh, layers we, we need to connect every um, every nodes okay so you can just put a01 is going to be the weight 00 which is this one times the yeah the a00 which is the first input okay so we're going to since it's a01 and there is this this the other input here it's going to have the w01 this value times the a01 here and finally we have the uh bias which is in what amount are we considering it to the data to shift? It's going to be constant. It's not going to vary as the weights. It's just going to be B0, okay? But then add B0. And the same goes for four. We're, we're the one who are going to decide how the amount of uh, hidden layer we're going to have in the amount of nodes or also the amount of hidden layers. So if we're going to have A11, also the same thing will happen for A11. There is this effect. There's the two lines, right? 
So we're going to calculate the W1 thing from A00 to A11. This is the weight times A00, which is this one itself, and then the W11. The, yeah, the W11, this one. Was the and finally the pairs okay? So this is how we this is how we can calculate the next hidden layers uh, for for the functions okay? So in this form, after this, there is something called the activation layer. So by this formula, we're going to calculate the not the a values actually. We're going to calculate the x functions. So at the end, the prediction is y, right? That's how, like, depending on x, we're going to predict y, right? So then we're going to use the functions. Uh, the functions, like, there are many activation functions, like it can be sigmoid function, and there is the RELU function, activation function. So depending on our uh, data set or whatever function we want, whatever function to decide, that we decided to use, then we're going to put that x values or those predictions on that function, maybe if it is sigmoid, then just like this, we're going to do a sigmoid function for that value of x. So that's how we can, we predicted x, and then put f of x or sigmoid function times this. We're going to predict the value or the final result a zero one a one one a two one, and this will continue. The, like if we have two futures here, maybe if it is a if we're going to decide like this or that, then we we will going to have two cycles here. Right, two nodes here, and then we were going to make a connection between this node and the other node, just the same as this one. Okay, so um, I need to make sure in every step, since I feel like it might be somehow complicated for those of you who had started now. Okay, are we good? Or any question until now? Okay. If there is any question, yeah, make sure to just talk me in the middle of uh, nowhere. So yeah, so this is the whole uh, the idea of the idea of just uh, the neural network is to consider the weight and the bytes, the bias. So we we'll just say that we have put some guess on the graph and some guess for the weight in the bias, right? So it might it might not be right. So there is the other process called the back propagation. It uses algorithm like the gradient descent, and what it do is it will calculate the errors in prediction and adjust the weights and bias of the function by moving backwards with the layers. Also, you need to understand the concept of this. There is the forward propagation. We're going to predict the value. And there is the backward propagation. Depending on our prediction, we're going to adjust our value, our weight and bias, OK? That's what neural network is. So if you have just if you have, if you have the main concept of neural network, then there are types of neural networks. The first one is convol uh, convolutional neural networks. It's used mostly used for things uh, related with the computer vision and image classification applications, okay? And there's the other one, the recurrent neural networks that we are going to see or that you're required to use. And this is a natural language. It's typically used in natural language and speech recognition application as it leverages sequential or time series data. So the different thing of recurrent neural networks from other neural networks is it's mostly used or um, it's used for a data that are dependent on time or the time series data. Maybe as time series data, we can classify the stock market data that we have used lastly as a time series data. Also this week, I think you've done some time series analysis. So we can just consider those. If we have those type of data that are dependent on time, then we're going to use the recurrent neural networks or RNNs. So what are uh, recurrent neural networks? Recurrent neural networks, they are type of uh, neural networks designed to handle sequential or time series data as mentioned earlier. So unlike the feedforward neural networks, they have connection that form cycles, allowing information to persist, which means, uh, okay, back to the formula we've just used in order to calculate a zero one, it's just addition of this line and this line and this line, right? And if we add another layer to calculate the output of that layer or that node, we're just going to add this relation and this layer, but this process is going to keep repeating itself, okay? Whatever, the, it's going to get complicated as we are going to have more hidden layers and more number of nodes, but it's okay. The same process, are, we're going to repeat the same process. But when it is, when it's re, uh, recurrent neural network, the time or the data, uh, the, the, the data or the output, the future 
those who don't have predicted, it's going to affect the, the next prediction, okay? It's going to take a feedback loop. I think maybe you can re re remember feedback loops in physics or, yeah, like within the current flows and if if we have effect on the, if, if it's have effect back on the prediction or on the next prediction, then it's called the, it's going to have some feedback loop and it's going to affect the next prediction, which makes it, okay. Is there any problem? Am I audible? Okay, totally. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So yeah, it's just uh, what is different from the neural network is the output or the first prediction, it's going to have uh, an effect on the next prediction, okay? So let's see the characteristics of RNA that differs from the no, uh, normal neural networks or other neural networks. The first one is, as we've mentioned, dependencies of higher elements. RNA process sequence of data by maintaining the hidden state that captures information about previous element in this sequence the hidden state that's so that's going to keep updating itself as each steps of the sequence uh, so it's just like uh having in the network to have a form of memory okay i would really prefer to show you a picture on this maybe uh, so that we can be somehow familiar mm. okay yeah ground fancy I don't think uh, we can handle it or so key. Nothing but like this. Uh, maybe this one. So see, this is, this one is the normal neural network process that we like for getting this part. This is the normal neural network that we've seen earlier, right? So in this case, or in the RNA case, recurrent neural network case, this output or the first output, it's going to be back for it in order to be added to this prediction, okay? So why is this useful? Let's just keep or like, assume that you've seen a video, one video, and where you're going to, a video that you've, or a, a movie that you know the story about. This is just ex an example that I have read, but yeah, imagine seeing a movie that you know what the output or the outcome is. So you're seeing the movie, you're just going to remind the movie and the scene, or so like it's going to help you in a decision. You can just tell what, what next it's going to happen, but it has some disadvantage that we will going to mention um, later. But so the difference between Let's just open this image. The difference between the two, uh, yeah, the recurrent neural network and the uh, feedforward neural network is the output is going to have a feedback loop and it's going to uh, uh, have an effect on the prediction, okay? In neural networks, we're just going to move this way. So if there's another layer here, there's going to be a connection between the two nodes, the same as this connection. But here, before making, like on making this prediction, the output from this neural network is going to be back and it's going to affect this prediction, okay? So feedback loops, it's each neuron in a, in an array ring receives input not only from the previous layer, but also from its own output from the previous time state. So you just can understand from this concept that why we have just said it depends, uh, ring is mostly used for data that have time series variations or uh, time series data that depends on time series like stock market data. Okay, so it's RNNs are designed to handle data whether uh, the order matters. Yeah, the order matters, which means we're going to start from the, it's mentioned here, where it's going, we're always from the oldest to the newest, okay? The oldest data sets are going to be feeded first and then the newest will continue. That should be the, uh, the sequence of the data that we're going to use. Okay. So yeah, seeing this, there are there is some disadvantage of, of uh, that really. So we we just say that neural networks are better than machine learning uh, using just random or vanilla machine learning, better than using we uh, using normal machine learning. So we can use the neural networks, and then we have just see what deep neural network is 
also we have seen what arenin is but we, it's just saying that arenins have disadvantage so the disadvantage uh, it starts from the gradient descent so what is gradient descent it's an optimization optimization algorithm it's used to uh, minimize the loss function in neural network so we've just said that we're going to um, put an image or a graph just we're going to estimate a graph that is that we think it might fit the data set right so what probably the data the, that graph will result in some errors the point of doing all the calculations or the prediction is to minimize that error which is the back propagation that we've mentioned earlier so the the back propagation it's going to minimize we expect that or we hope that it's going to minimize the loss function in neural networks so it works by calculating the gradient or the partial it's just calculating the partial derivatives of the loss function with respect to the model's parameters so once back to this point back propagation it uses algorithms like gradient descent we've just mentioned sorry, to calculate errors in prediction and then adjust the weight and biases of the function by moving backward through the layers in an effort to train model. So gradient descent, it's an algorithm or a, 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 yeah, an algorithm that is used to calculate the a better, a better weight and bias for the graph or for the specific situation, okay? So the, RN, the disadvantage of RRN, it's about the gradient descent. So, what is, it, what is it about the gradient descent? Let's see, there are two problems, the vanishing gradient descent problem and the exploding gradient descent problems. The gradient, the vanishing part, it's okay, so when the gradients become exceedingly small during back propagation, as a result, the weight updates very slowly and the network fails to learn effectively. So at the end, we have also mentioned that the result is where the, the aim is to change or to update the amount of weight and w and b right the amount of the weight and the bias right so if the gradient descent is very small the weight and the bias are not going to be affected that much this means that the, there is be there, there is going to be a very slow uh, process of having a correct graph or an updated form of uh, prediction okay it typically happens because for repeated multiplication of gradient descents, gradients through many layers, especially if the activation functions like sigmoid or tan h squash the input values to a small range. Uh, those are the types of activation functions that we're going to use. There's the sigmoid, there's the tan h, and also there's the RELU, but in L, uh, LST form, <laughs> we mostly use the sigmoid function. Okay. So, uh, so, so the point is in vanishing gradient problem, we're going to have a very slow process in the uh, process of fitting that the data, the graph to the data, to, to the complicated data. And the second one is exploding gradient problem. So the exploding gradient. So yeah, maybe you can just you're just wondering why this happened. So we have just said that it's have a feedback loop, right? So we're going to affect it's going to affect the gradient descent every time. It's going to the gradient descent or the back propagation. It's going to be affected every time. So there's the uh, the other one is still yeah the gradient uh, function. It's going to be updated every time in in a red rainfall so the second one is the exploding part which is it occurs when the gradient become excessively large during back propagation okay which means it's going to be affected every time this leads to very large updated to the networks if we have a very large gradient descent it might be it might go uh, the widths might exit in, a, in an amount that we don't want them to exceed which can cause the model to become unstable so cause similar to vanishing gradient this happens due to repeated multiplication but in this case the gradients amplify as they are propagated back through the layers, especially when using activation functions that don't properly constrain the value. So yeah, the disadvantage of the using overall the array name, it's while updating the gradient descent every time, it will like in, in a, just in a conceptual way, it's just, what we have said is it's a time series data, right? We're using a time series data. so from coming from the oldest to the newest the, the, the all the data might not affect the prediction in the same amount okay so if you're doing the stock market data the data that have happened or the stock market data that are uh, put it like before last week or 
uh, before a little, very large interval of time, they might not have that amount of effect for tomorrow's prediction or for next week's prediction. But the RNN is not going to consider those effects. It's just going to consider or it's just going to update uh, the our models or our prediction based on the time series, okay? So it's not going to calculate whether which data or which time data is going to have uh, a large effect or a large... Uh, uh, a large effect or a small effect on for tomorrow so for the next for the prediction that we want to make conceptually you can just consider it like this maybe uh, it might be uh, not easy to understand it from the gradient descent side it's just you can think about how the time series or how the time is going to affect the next um, prediction so here, this happens due to uh, repeated multiplications, but in this case, the gradient amplify as they are propagated back through the layers. Propagated back, okay? Just keep in mind that they are going to be propagated back even without doing the back propagation. Since we're going, since we're using the feedback loop, we're uh, using the gradient problem in the array layer part, especially when using activation functions that don't properly constrain, uh, constrain the values. So here comes the long short term memory in order to solve the two problems or disadvantages that we have mentioned earlier. So uh, LSTM or long sh short term, term memory, they are also part of the array architectures. They are widely used in deep learning. It excels at capturing long, long term dependencies, making it deal for sequence prediction tasks. So the main advantage of LSTM as conceptually also again, you can take it as which time series data or which uh, data is uh, is going to have a very large effect on the prediction. Whether it is an old data, whether it is a new data, quite amount of effect does it have on the new prediction. That's the point of LSTM. The RNN uh, neural network is just going to, as I have mentioned earlier, it's, go it's just going to take every data, every time series data, and it's, it is going to feed it to the neural networks based on from the oldest data to the newest. But in LS, in LSTM, it's going to calculate whether the long-term data are going to have uh, an effect on the new data in what percent. Uh, we've just mentioned what the definition of weight, right? It's going to calculate uh, the amount of relations between the two nodes, the future, the, the input future and the prediction, right? Consider LSTM as that how amount of effect are we going to have from that old data on the new prediction, and how amount of data are we going to have from the short-term data on our prediction. So an LSTM unit that consists of this three, yeah, it have three gates, uh, the, and memory cells or LSTM cells can be considered as a layer of neurons in traditional feedward neural network with each neuron having a hidden layer and current state, just similar with the old uh, definition of neural networks, also same with um, yeah, same with the um, the array drain network. So yeah, there's also we can also see an image for LSD just to have some idea for the discussion for our discussion. But you can go deeper. You should actually. You need to go deeper uh, on both of them. LSD. Mm. It's so maybe easier one to describe is uh, yeah it was better if I have included an image for this but let's see yeah, I was just looking for animes that can say that can show us both the all the types of uh, effect, like the long term effect and the short term effect. So here's an image. Maybe if you have recalled from our discussion, it's the activation function that's you that we are using here. We are using the tanich and the sigmoid function here. But this was not the graph that I was looking for. But anywho, we're going in L in LSTM. What's differentiated from the other types of neural network is that uh, yeah it's going to calculate both of them it's going to calculate the amount of effect that we're going to have from the long term memory and from the short term memory so you can just understand that from the name long short term memory so there are gates in a list team that helps us to do that 
the four gate gate, the input gate, and the output gate. So the four gate gate is responsible for keeping the information or forgetting it so that the sigmoid activation function is applied to it, which is the output will be ranging from zero to one. So we have just uh, they have or had one output. So according to our Renin, we're going to make some backward pr propagation so that we can estimate the we can add this effect on the for the next estimation or prediction, right? So here, what amount of that data are we going to forget or are we going to keep? And there's the input case is responsible for expressing the importance of new information uh, carried by the input. Here we will be applying to activation functions, the sigmoid and the tanit functions, the activation functions on the simple neural network definition, it's this function, okay? Here is the sigmoid function. It's just this new uh, activation function. We're going to put our x value in that function, and we're going to predict the y value. Those that is the definition of the activation function. So maybe we're going to use some complicated activation functions because we want our data graph in order to be uh, covered as much as possible. Okay, so that it can cover all the data sets that are given. And there's the output gate. Based on the information we have gained, we give our sentence as the filling the blank to the output gate. Yeah, the output gate will predict the output. It's just yeah, consider it that easy. So yeah, that is what LST means, long short term memory. So we're going to use our RNN uh, or the recurrent neural network because uh, when we have the a, a data that depends on the time series, so that we can have a feedback from the output on the new one. Okay. So depending on the time series, if if you have a time uh, a data that is that depends on time series, we're going to have use a ringing in order to avoid those two problems, the gradient problem. So in order to minimize the error of a ringing, a ringing, we're going to use the low sh uh, long short time memory. So uh, yeah, if you decide in what percent of the data or what percent of the old or that specific data we need to focus on. Okay, so you, do you have the aspects or what amount of the this uh, layout that or like presentation that you have understand? Are we cool so that we can go to the demonstration part? So is that complicated, confusing, or difficult, or do you have just understand why we're going to use the LST? So there is just the normal the like the linear regression model. We can just use that for prediction. Why are we going to use the neural networks method, the RNN method, and also the LST method? Do you have any question? <laughs> or confusions also, or suggestions? Okay. So if that is the case, then all the concepts that we have mentioned, they're going, to, they are going to be demonstrated um, here. So we, we don't need to understand every details, but uh, since we're not going to do the calculation by ourselves, but yeah, the first one is we need to have the data. We need to split the data to training based data. So uh, you've just made the time series analysis and uh, for your data and you have uh, classified them to training test, probably since you've made some predictions on task three, I guess. And yeah, use some averaging techniques in order to have a proper amount of data because the quality of the data is going to uh, affect the prediction or the model. Mm -hmm. And there's the LST models. So from uh, I think you can use both PyTorch and TensorFlow for uh, to use the models. So here we're going to use the TensorFlow and the LST, um, of course, uh, the LST model. So in this case, we have generated random data. So the X data and the Y data. So you can relate them. Like when we talk about the, when we talk here, you can relate them with the, maybe with the concepts, okay? So on our data, we're going to use random data. So you have your own data. So here we have a data that are uh, like in range of 10 and 100, okay? Which is uh, the X value is going to have maybe from zero to nine and the zero to eight and the last nine or the last value is going to be Y, which is going to be predicted since the X value in this case are going to be the features or the neural. Yeah, this part of the maybe A0 and A1. In this case, we have uh, 10 of them, I guess, right? Yeah, we have 10 of them or 10 features. 
since we have just put yeah from from the data that we have uh, that we have picked randomly we can we have specified the x and the y part so the x part is going to contain every row except the last uh, rows which is going to stand for the y or for the prediction part and for the y part we're going to take, uh, take every row and only the last column which is uh, the minus one the column and indexed by my one, minus one okay so we're going to reshape the x value since we're going to feed the model uh, in the in this case it's reshaping the value means putting the yeah the new shape of the x is going to be 109 and one which means there are 100 samples, as we've mentioned, in uh, 100 rows and 10 columns, right? So the nine of them are going to be futures, and the last one is going to be the parameter or the future that we want to predict from, depending on, on the other futures. So each with a sequence length of nine time steps, and each time, um, each time step has one future, which means one future to just predict. We've just classified the, our data set into training test, so we can go to the model architecture or using the LSD model. And here we're using the RELU functions, as I have mentioned earlier, which you can just use the sigmoid functions. Mostly, actually, we're, we're using the sigmoid function in most of the uh, LSD models. So, so the activation is uh, RELU, and the input shape is this, which is uh, nine row and the one column. And we can just include uh, disclude this as a mission, or maybe it's mentioned on your task. You can just use two layers or more than two layers so that you're going to use uh, the prediction or that you're going to check the error of your prediction. And then you can also add or minimize the amount of um, hidden layers for you. In this case, let's just disclude this one. We can just use one one layers, okay? Just mentioning the model or calling the model once, it means we're going to have one layers. In one layer, it means three layers at as a total. There's the layer for the future, there's the layer for the output, and one hidden layer between. Okay. So here, as you can see, the the data is very clear, right? It's just a random data of hundred rows and uh, ten columns. So it's all going to have a value that is between one and nine, which means it's really easy to predict. So don't be so surprised if you have a, a good predicted value here. It's not going to be the case in every, it's not going to be the case actually in most of the prediction, okay? So yeah, we have uh, estimated almost the same amount of uh, the actual value in the predicted value is almost the same amount. This is expected, okay? So we might add, let's just add another layer or another hidden layer by removing them where the current the yeah, adding the second layer to the oh return sequence Okay, let's see why this is being done here. Okay, so we'll just let's uncomment this one. So yeah, maybe loading the model. It might take some time. Okay, now we we'll ju we've just we're using two types of, uh, I mean, two layers as I have added the other model here. Let's see if there's a difference on the prediction. There is a difference in the prediction. Okay, it was nine point five something. It's just a slight prediction. Actually, it's very good if we get the first type of prediction also. But the point is adding another layer is going to benefit the estimation, which is 9.0. So we can just, uh, depending on this, we can differentiate the amount of layers that we're going to use and just use the LS team easily as this uh, in this way. Yeah. 
so it's it this is it so if you have any question okay anything you can say so just understand we it might be that not that like while uh, doing the experiment or the demonstration you might not be uh, asked to list all the definitions and the meanings but uh, all the calculations actually you're not but it's uh, it's a very nice thing to know them to know the concepts and we expect you to mention the difference the things that you've used and the reasoning and all the tools that you're going to use in your report okay so for that purpose, it's good to know the concepts and why you're using specific types of neural networks and things like that. For the assignment, when we build a model, can we use only the trained data set or we should merge it with this stored data set? Sorry, I'm unable to speak. Okay, let me go through the data set. Oh, we should merge it with the stored data set. I think you need to merge it with the stored data set, okay? Yeah, you need to merge the data with the stored data set so, so that you're going to have uh, a good analysis or like if you've seen that they're not the, they they don't they don't contain the same amount of feature on the stored data set on and on the trained data set so uh to have a very fulfilled amount of uh, overview it's you should include the stored data it, you should merge the two data set yeah okay then Danny, another question Another question. Okay, so okay then yeah, I will share the code and yeah, we, after doing the first prediction, you need to do the listing prediction. Thank you everyone for hearing. So we can end the session here. Thank you.